Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So, in one of our previous videos, we discussed the canteen and all of the food skills in there and what the optimal food skill setups are. Link in the top right and description. However, you do have to have all of the foods you need to make these food skills if you want to use these food skills. So, in today's video, we will be covering how to get every single one of these foods. But before we get too deep into that, quick reminder, we do have a Twitter and Tuna does also have a Twitch. Now Tuna and I are equal business partners and we do split everything. So following us on Twitter as well as following Tuna over on Twitch is one of the best ways you can help support the channel completely for free. Also, Tuna will be live on stream as soon as this video goes out and we may or may not have a review copy of Iceborne a day early. And also bloopers at the end of the video as always, enjoy those. Alright, let's talk about how to get all of the food ingredients. Now, there are 102 different ingredients in the game. 30 meats, 30 fishes, 30 veggies, and 12 drinks. But in this video, we're only going to cover 60 of them because they are the important ones. In other words, all 30 meat ingredients and all 30 veggie ingredients. As we mentioned in the last video about the canteen, eating for defense up large is a trap. In base Monster Hunter World Endgame, it's only going to give you roughly a 2.5% increase in effective health. Not worth it. You are always better off either eating for attack large or eating for elemental resistance large. Eating for attack not only lets you deal more damage, but that means that you get faster flinches, which makes a run safer. Also, the run will take less time, meaning you have less time to make mistakes. Or instead, you eat veggies for elemental resistance up in niche matchups where they use a lot of elemental attacks. The 15 extra elemental resistance gives you give or take 15% less damage. It does go up or down depending on how much elemental resistance you have to start with, but either way, it is a lot of damage reduction. So yeah, that's why we won't be covering any of the fish foods because you shouldn't ever be running them. And as for the drinks, honestly, their effects are very minor and not very useful. And they're pretty easy to get too because you just follow side quest lines for them. But if you would like us to cover those in a short video, let us know in the comments below. Alright, so before we discuss how to get each specific ingredient, we need to talk about the different ways you get ingredients to help contextualize everything. Trust me, covering all of these beforehand makes it a lot less confusing once we get into each of the 60 different foods. However, if you're already familiar with how things like field research or critical bounties, or unique upsurge gathering points work, just go to the timestamp on screen to go straight to all of the actual ingredients. So there are seven different ways you acquire food ingredients in Monster Hunter World. The first way is it's simply a starting ingredient you get at the beginning of the game. The other way is you unlock it from an assigned quest as you play through the story. The third way is you unlock it from an optional quest. The fourth way is you unlock it from a delivery you get from an NPC. The fifth way is from a field researcher bounty that you get from following the quest lines of the field researchers. The sixth way is from rare account items from gathering points. And the seventh way is from unique account items coming from upsurging or flourishing unique gathering points. Now, you may not know what a lot of these different things are, so let's just briefly cover what each one is. So the starting ingredients, main questline ingredients, and optional quest ingredients are kind of self-explanatory. You either start with them or you complete a quest. Now for the deliveries, these are very similar to the optional quests. You unlock them from talking to NPCs as you go through the main storyline as well as as you go through side quest lines. But instead of completing a quest, what you have to do is turn in a certain amount of items to the research trio. Now, the field researcher ones are tricky if you've never done any of the field researcher quest lines. Basically, if you pull up the Expedition World map, you can see that each of the locations has a different field researcher. Now, if the field researcher has an exclamation mark next to their name, you know that they have a critical bounty for you to go start. So go start an expedition in that map, go find the researcher by finding the exclamation mark on the map, and then speak with them to find out what the critical bounty is. For the endemic life researcher, this is going to be catching a certain number of endemic life. 
and for the Piscine Researcher, it's going to be catching fish. The Linnean Researcher just unlocks other Grimalkins for you to have assist you in different areas of the game. But the Linnean Researcher is important for one particular food that requires you to complete the questline with the Gaja Lakas. But more on that in a second. After you complete the requirements for the Critical Bounty, just go to the Research Trio to turn it in and you get your food. Alright, the next one is going to be Rare Drops from Gathering Points. When I say gathering points, I mean account item gathering points, the ones that give you items that give you research points. So every account item gathering point has three different tiers of items you can gather from them. You have the basic tier, which is just going to be your standard item. Then you have the second tier of rare items. These are roughly two to two and a half times the research points per item. And then you have the third tier of legendary items, which are roughly 10 to 15 times the points. These legendary account items also only spawn in high rank. Now, which one you get every time you pull something out of a gathering node is completely RNG. But there are a few ways to increase your chances of getting the rarer ones. First off, run Geologist level 2. Geologist level 2 lets you get an extra gather out of every single account item gathering node. So instead of just getting 3, you get 4 per node. Next run Master Gatherer, you can find this on the Chainmail Helmet, on the Hunter's Waist, or the Commission Helmet. This slightly increases your gathering speed, so you might as well run it while you're doing gathering runs. Now another note about builds, don't bother running Forager's Luck. This skill says that it increases the chance for a rare node to spawn. So the rare nodes it's referring to are the upsurge nodes we'll be covering next. See, anytime you load a normal quest, you have a chance of this rare node to spawn. Except there is a method to get it to spawn 100% of the time, which we'll be covering in a second. Now the final tip for getting these rare account items is to look for either flourishing or upsurging resources of the type you're looking for. So if you look in Expedition, you'll see that some Sometimes different areas have either upsurge or flourishing of different gathering points. What this essentially does is change the distribution in the drop tables for the gathering points, which as far as we understand it helps you get those rare account items. And yes, flourish and upsurge do the exact same thing, they literally refer to the same byte of data in the files. They're just named differently because saying flourishing bone piles is weird. Now, if you cannot find a flourishing or upsurge of the resource node you need, go check your investigations. Every investigation has a chance to have either flourishing or upsurge set with the investigation. And every single time you load that investigation, the area will always have that upsurge or that flourishing set to it. Just remember, if you're going to be using these for gathering runs, don't get rid of any important tier 2 or tier 3, 3 or 4 boxes. You probably want to save those for augment stone or deco farming. Alright, the final way that you can get canteen ingredients is with the upsurge gathering nodes. So basically, if you have a specific resource that is upsurging in every map of the game, it spawns a specific unique resource node. This unique resource node has a set location and only lets you gather from it one time. But this one time gathers you a unique rare canteen ingredient. And as I just mentioned earlier, there is a chance for this rare node to spawn if you go into the map without an upsurge or flourishing happening. And the Forager's Luck skill does increase the chance of that happening, but you can make it 100% by just finding an investigation with the Upsurge of Flourishing happening. So yeah, Forager's Luck is a useless skill. These unique Upsurge ingredients are generally the ones hunters are missing because it is very, very difficult to get them accidentally. You not only have to gather them entirely by luck without trying to look for them, but also you have to do it while that particular resource is upsurging on the map you're on. Or just get super lucky and have it spawn normally. So yeah, if you're missing some and you have no idea where to find them, it's generally these ones. And yes, we'll be covering exactly where to find them. Alright, so let's start covering one by one how to get each of the canteen ingredients for both the meats and for the veggies. So let's start off with all of the meats. So we're going to skip all of the ones that are either starting ingredients or main questline ingredients because you'll just get those by going through the story. Alright, so let's start with Courage. So for Courage, the first food that is neither of those I just mentioned is going to be the Wyvern Egg. You get this from the level 4 optional quest Getting Yoked in the Forest that you get from the Mouscular Chef. Super easy quest, you just have to grab two Wyvern Eggs and deliver them to the box. Just run a Gilly Mantle so that way the Rathian doesn't murder you as you're carrying it over. And if you really want to power game it, run the Pro Transporter skill as well to move faster. The next courage food is going to be the Wyvern Tail. 
You get this from the Endemic Life Researcher in the Ancient Forest for capturing Woodland Terexes. Super easy. For any of these Endemic Life Researcher bounties, just make sure you run a ghillie mantle because some of these Endemic Life creatures can be a little bit skittish. But yeah, just capture net them. The next one, the Wyvern Head, is a main questline one for the Toby Kadachi quest, so we'll skip that. The next one, the Wyvern Filet, is the most tricky one to get on the list of Courage Foods. This is because it's an upsurge account item ingredient. And for upsurge account items, this one is particularly tricky because, as I mentioned earlier, you have to complete the Gaja Locker quest line in order to be able to get it. Alright, so first off, you need to have an upsurge in Amber Deposits in the Elder's Recess in order for this one to spawn. Now, you need to go to the Gaja Locker's main hall in order to find this, so the fastest way is to start from Camp 1. From there, you want to run directly south so you can go to the Gajalaka Tunnel. Again, you have to complete the Gajalaka Cultural Exchange in order to have access to these. Then you want to go directly east and then take the tunnel to the Gajalaka's hideout in the back. Once you get to the hideout, turn left and climb up the wall. Make your way down this watery slope right here and the amber deposit with the unique item is to your left. One final note, when you are sliding down the creek, make sure you stop short or you can very easily slide off the ledge on accident. And you cannot climb back up. Alright, that covers all of the Courage meets, let's talk about the Resilience meets next. So the first non-main quest Resilience meet is the Bullion meet you get from the optional quest Exterminator of the Waste. This is a level 2 optional quest given by the Meowscular Chef. You just have to kill 14 Vespoids, super easy, just shoot them with a slinger. The next is the Steeled Meat from the optional quest Chef Quest, a Rotten Request. This is a level 6 quest you get from the Meowscular Chef. You have to go to the Rotten Vale, kill 10 Gyros, easy peasy. The next is going to be Wild Chicken. You get this from gathering a Dragon Vein Amber from the Elder's Recess. Dragon Vein Amber is the rare, not the legendary Amber, so it's fairly easy to get. Just do some gathering rotations through the lava areas and you'll get it pretty easily. And for the final resilience food, we have the marinated carpaccio. Mmm, carpaccio. You get the marinated carpaccio from the optional quest, The Meat of the Matter. This is a level 5 delivery quest from, surprise surprise, the Meowscular Chef. You have to deliver two lumps of meat, which you get from a dead Raphanos in Odegaron's lair. Super easy quest, just make sure you run Gilly Mantle so Odegaron doesn't jump on you for stealing his num nums. Okay, next we have the Vigor Foods. So the first two, the Aptonoth meat and the Apsiros, Apkirost, Apsirost, are both main quest lines, so you'll just get them. On the other hand, the third ingredient, the dice steak, comes from the delivery, a great help. This delivery request comes from the provisions manager. You get it super early on, so most likely you already have this one. The next ingredient is the giant sirloin. This is the endemic life researcher's critical bounty in the Rotten Vale. Next up is the big bite burger. So this is an upsurge unique account item in the Rotten Vale. So naturally you'll need an upsurge for ancient fossils in the Rotten Vale and you'll start in camp 1. So you'll exit camp 1, take a sharp right until you get to the next big area. Then once you're there, you'll take the far left passage down and it'll be right here at the bottom of the slope. Not exactly sure why we're making burgers out of fossils, but eh, I don't make the rules. And for the final vigor meat ingredient, we have the Giga Steak. This comes from the Ancient Amber, which is the legendary account item coming from the Amber Gathering nodes. Whether you get one of these is just pure RNG, but it shouldn't take you more than a few rotations through Elder's Recess to get one. Alright, next up we have the Acumen foods, so White Liver and Barbecue Short Rib you both start with. The next food, Tangy Tripe, you get from the optional quest, Chef Quest, Pump to Deliver. This is a level 6 delivery quest from, you guessed it, the Muscular Chef. It's just a gathering quest for four forgotten fossils in the Rotten Vale, super easy. The next acumen meat ingredient is the Hot Heart. This one comes from the Upsurge account item, the Pearl Oyster, and this one is a little tricky to find. Unless you're the exploring type, chances are you have never even seen the area of the Coral Highlands this one is located in. So of course you need an Upsurge and Pearl Oysters in the Coral Highlands to start this quest. So start in Camp 12, head through the tunnel, and then take a left down to the main area where you normally fight Legiana. Go past the vines you normally climb to get to Legiana and Kirin and go to the second vines instead. Now inside of these vines is a hidden tunnel, you want to enter that and go down. This will take you to a very beautiful secret coral cave. You'll want to climb up to the top of the vine column in the center, and then when you look to your right, there will be a very high up platform you want to jump to. It may take you a few tries to get the angle right. 
but once you nail the jump in the corner, you will find the pearl oyster that contains the platinum pearl. All right, next up on the acumen meat ingredients, we have the rich rump. Mmm, gotta love a rich rump. You get this from the delivery, the juicy meat resistance. You get this from the tech chief later on in the game, and it requires you to turn in an Uragan scoot. And for the final acumen meat ingredient, we have the grand foie gras. This comes from gathering a true barrel, which is going to be a rare account item from the barrel gathering nodes. Pretty easy to get this one, just do some rotations around camp 8 in the Elder's Recess. How you get an engorged fatty liver from what is essentially a blue-colored amber, I don't really know, but again, didn't make the rules. Alright, next up are the artillery meats. So, the first artillery meat ingredient is the peon turkey. This one comes from another endemic life researcher, Critical Bounty. This one is the carrier and capture, which you get in the Wildspire Wastes. The next artillery meat ingredient is going to be the Great Mutton. This one comes from a delivery called the Bonin Roast Resistance. This one, similar to the Juicy Meat Resistance, comes from the Tech Chief. However, this one requires you to turn in a Radoban Carapace. Next up on the artillery meat ingredients is the Herbivore Egg. You get this one from the optional quest, Getting Yoked in the Waste. This is a level 3 optional quest from, can you guess it? Correct, the Mouscular Chef. This one requires you to get herbivore eggs from the Wildspire Wastes. This particular quest is actually kind of funny because if you don't use a ghillie mantle, this is the only time you'll ever see Apseros be aggro to you. Their maternal and paternal instincts will trigger and they will try to actually hit you to save their potential future babies. But either way, super easy quest, just use a ghillie mantle. Next up is the King Turkey coming from the optional quest, it's a crying Shamos. This is a level 4 quest and yes, it comes from the Miascular Chef. Unsurprisingly, it requires you to go to the Coral Highlands and kill 11 Shamos. Next up is the Magma Mutton. This is another endemic life researcher critical bounty. This one is done in the Elder's Recess and requires you to grab bomb beetles. This one is particularly easy because they kinda just hang out. And the final meat ingredient is the Kaiser Turkey. This one you get from the Abyssal Barrel, which is the legendary account item coming from the Barrel Gathering nodes. Again, this is just a matter of RNG, so just keep farming barrels until you find one. Alright, that is all of the meats, let's move on to the vegetables. So just as a quick forward on the vegetables. Every single category has at least two rare account items as part of their ingredients, and every single one has an upsurge gathering account item as one of the ingredients. So if you want to get all of these, get your gathering set equipped. Alright, let's start with the courage vegetables. So the first two, the Magna Celery and the Rapscallion, come from the Topa Kadachi quest, so easy peasy. Next up is the Jewel Cactus, which comes from the, well, Jewel Cactus. This is going to be the rare account item coming from Round Cacti in the Wildspire Waste. You know the drill, equip a gathering set, go do some rotations. Next up is the Dragon Bloom, which comes from the Dragon Bloom. There's a fairly evident system to the nomenclature for a lot of these vegetables. So this is going to be the upsurge account item for round cacti in the Wildspire Wastes. And of course, to start off with, you need to have flourishing cacti in the Wildspire Wastes. So to find this, start at Camp 5 and just head out of the camp and up to the left. At this point, just head straight forward and up the vines. Once you get up there, you'll see a cave. Hug the right wall and follow it up. Follow this path up and take a left at the next two forks. Then you're going to climb up the vines right here, go to the right and just make your way up to the top. And then you'll find not only a gorgeous view, but the round cactus that has your dragon bloom. Alright, next up for courage veggie ingredients is the kingly cactus, which comes from the kingly cactus. This is the legendary account item that comes from round cacti in the wildspire waste. Again, purely RNG, so just do farming rotations until you get it. The location for the Dragon Bloom we just covered also has quite a few round cacti around there, so feel free to hit them up while you're getting it. Alright, so the final courage vegetable is going to be the Fatty Tomato. You get this from the delivery quest Tomatoes Red as Magma. This one comes from the Excitable A-Lister and requires you to turn in a lava nugget that you get from Uragon. Alright, next up we have the Resilience Vegetables. So, the first two come from an assigned quest, we'll be skipping those. But the next Resilience Vegetable is going to be the Exquisite Shroom Cap. This is the rare account item coming from the unique mushroom colonies you find in the Ancient Forest. The next is going to be the Moonlit Mushroom. This is a unique upsurge mushroom. In order for this to spawn, you will need to have flourishing mushrooms on the ancient forest. So for this one, you want to start at camp 11. Take the southwest path down, 
jump down to your left and in the big tree in front of you, go to the right side of it and go through the crawl space. Go across the river and take the right side of the fork and the mushroom colony will be right there. Loot that up and you will have your moonlit mushroom. Alright, next for Resilience Foods is the Spirit Shroom Cap. Similar to the Cacti, this is going to be the legendary account item coming from the Unique Mushroom Colonies. Again, it is all RNG, so just start doing some rotations through the Ancient Forest. The final Resilience Vegetable is the Soiled Shroom Cap. This comes from the Level 1 Delivery Optional Quest from, you guessed it, the Meowskular Chef. Basically, you just have to go through and get 20 Gourmet Shroom Caps in the Ancient Forest. Easy peasy. Alright, next up we have the Vigor Vegetables. Now the first two ingredients are starting ingredients, so we'll skip them. Then the next one is going to be Shine Bloom. This is the rare account item from flower beds in the Ancient Forest. Methinks that might be a pattern to how you get the vegetables. And yes, you guessed it, the next Vigor Vegetable is an Upsurge account item. The Sunkissed Grass, which you get from a unique flower bed in the Ancient Forest. So, of course, you need to have flourishing flower beds in the Ancient Forest. And for this one, you'll start at Camp 17. Now start heading out right and hugging the right wall until you reach the slightly open area where the Mandragora spawns. From there, head straight forward into the crawl space and then keep following this path all the way up past the vine swing. And then keep running forward and you will find your sun-kissed grass. And following the pattern, the next ingredient is going to be the legendary account item coming from flower beds, the gold bloom. You know the drill, just keep doing rotations till you get it. The final vigor vegetable is going to be the king truffle. This one comes from a delivery, mushrooms, nature's smelly bounty. This one comes from the fiver bro and you have to turn in a moss wine hide. Super easy, just go to the ancient forest, find a moss wine and beat its adorable face in. Alright, next up we have the Acumen Vegetables. So, breaking patterns for a bit, the first one is not going to be either an assigned quest or starting item, but it comes from a delivery. The Aroma to Celery comes from the delivery named a Veggie Master of the Skies. This one comes from the Tech Chief and requires a Hornetor Carapace. Hornetors are those little beetle dudes hanging out in the Rotten Vale who like to flinch you. Go kill a few of them until you get a Carapace. Next up, we have Prismatic Paprika. This comes from a delivery also from the tech chief called Phantasmagoric Paprika. This requires to turn in a Puke Puke Sack Plus, so a high rank Puke Puke. Super easy fight. Alright, next up we have the Tainted Fruit. This is going to be the rare version of the Crimson Fruit found in the Rotten Vale. Same story as always, just do rotations in the Rotten Vale until you get one. Next up is the Heavenberry. This is the upsurge unique version of the Crimson Fruit in the Rotten Vale. So you need to start with an upsurge of Crimson Fruits in the Rotten Vale. Then you want to start in Camp 11 and run your way down. Run your way to your left into Odagaron's cave. Then before you get into the cave proper, climb the vines to the left right here. Harvest the crimson fruit and you will have your heavenberry. Then next up we have the Elysian fruits, which I'm sure you figured out by now is the legendary account item you get from harvesting crimson fruits. After that we have the millionfold cabbage. You get this for completing the delivery million zenny veggie. This one comes from the fiver bro and requires you to turn in a gyros fang very easy. Alright, on to the final row of ingredients we'll be covering in this video, the Artillery Vegetables. So the first two, the Kutku Bean and the Molten Mongo, come from the assigned quest Tickled Pink, so we're going to skip those. Next up is the Rock Fruit. This is, you guessed it, a rare account item. This one comes from the hard skin fruits you find in the Wild Spire Waste. Fun fact, Diablos and Black Diablos are actually herbivores, and these fruits are what they spend most of their time eating. Next up is the Divine Apple, which, yes, is the upsurge unique version of the hardskin fruit. So for this one, you will need to have a flourishing fruit in the Wildspire Waste. You're going to start in Camp 15. Run past the blue supply box and climb up the vines. Go left under the crawl space and then look to your left as you enter in. You will find a sparkly tough skin fruit that has your Divine Apple. The next is the Wild Fruit, which as you probably guessed is the legendary version of the Tough Skin Fruit. And then the final artillery veggie is the Emerald Durian. Strangely, this one comes from the legendary fossil, which despite its name is not the legendary version of the ancient fossil in the Rotten Vale, it's just the rare version. So you should get this one fairly quickly while gathering fossils. Alright, that is it. Every single meat ingredient and every single veggie ingredient and how to get them. 
With this, you will be able to completely fill out your meat and veggies in the canteen and be able to make any combination of food skills with either attack large or with elemental resist large. Which, let's be honest, are the only two important ones. Thank you as always for watching the video. If this helped you get some ingredients you were previously missing, be sure to like the video and let us know which ones in the comments. Thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. And if you're looking for like-minded hunters to hunt or chat with, especially with Iceborne right around the corner, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathlos Nest. And don't forget, we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and just various other things that interest us, and Tuna does have a Twitch where he streams every single day. Tuna will be live as soon as this video goes live, and also we may or may not have a review copy or two of Iceborne. And I can neither confirm nor deny that we may or may not be streaming Iceborne. And of course, we cannot do any of this without the generosity of our patrons. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, we are only going to be doing the full Patreon call out once a month now. But even if I'm not going to be calling out all of your names anymore, either way, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Alright, everybody, that is everything I have for this one. Iceborn is right around the corner, so you know that Tuna and I are going to be doing a lot of streams and a lot of content. If you want to see that as soon as it comes out, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, then YouTube won't let you know when our stuff comes out. Alright, happy hunting hunters, we'll see you on the next one. Bye! Upsurge account item ingredient. The vegetables, every single category of vegetable. Boop.